Um, if you could just state your name and your PIN number for us. I'm Tom Miller, Beta Sigma 643. I was inducted in fall of 1975. Okay, and what year did you graduate? 1977. 1977. So you were here for two, two years. Two I years. Was a transfer from Glendale College. Okay, okay. Um, what made you want to transfer to USC? Well, I'm a, I guess I'd be a third generation, uh, third generation legacy to USC. Uh, my parent, both my parents went here, mm -hmm. and one of my grandfather, both my grandfathers went here. Mm -hmm. So all through growing up, it was never really an issue for me. Uh, not because my parents put any pressure, but I just always wanted to go to USC. Huh. Uh, when you came here, were, did you think about joining a fraternity before you came here? Yeah, I started Rush uh, the summer before I transferred and rushed all the, the whole the entire summer and then the whole couple of weeks of uh, the first two weeks of summer or hmm. school. What what made you go teak? Uh, honestly, it was the, the people. I rushed really every house on the row, uh, not because I was indecisive, but I wanted to make sure mm -hmm. that I chose the right house. And the thing I liked about Teak was that really every guy I met, whether they were uh, straight A students or mm -hmm. otherwise, were very pleased to meet me. And I, anytime I dropped by the house and, and came by to visit, they were, I was always welcome. And that wasn't necessarily, necessarily the case with every mm -hmm. house. Uh, I just felt very comfortable. And I was asked by several houses, but uh, well, a couple of houses, but I chose Teak because I was more comfortable here. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in the 70s uh, and, and early 80s, Teak was a smaller house, um, which makes it, I think, a little bit harder to join, because there's more work involved, I think, in, in a smaller house. Well, maybe in the late 70s, but in the mm -hmm. mid-70s, when I joined in 75, we had about 80 actives, I think. So both houses were full, and in fact, when I pledged, I had to really lobby in order to get a, house, a room in the house. Uh, everybody ended up squeezing into the house, but we had four-man uh, pledges, uh, you can call them associates now, mm -hmm. but four-man pledge ports, and I was very fortunate to get a room with just one active, uh, but I had to really squeeze. I was one, I was uh, 15 among 20, so in my pledge class, mm -hmm. so I was toward the end, but it was a pretty full house, both mm -hmm. of them. When you, when you came here, was it, a, it was also it was a big house when you pledged? Yeah, there were, I guess, 70 actives wow. in the house. Was it, what was the focus, do you think, of the house? Was it academic, athletic? See, was that's it? why I joined. I think you asked me why I picked this house. There was no focus. And some may say that's good or bad, but I felt there was, it was a well-rounded house. We had Phi Beta Kappa students. We had uh, athletic a athletes. We had two guys when I came in who were mm -hmm. on the SC volleyball team. We had um, all kinds of students, some who, honestly, never graduated. And that's the unfortunate side. But every house has those. But we had ROTCs, we had Phi Beta Kappas, we had 4.0 students. Um, and, and that's, regardless of who they were or how their grades were or what their daddies did, they welcomed me. And they never asked me what my daddy did. They asked me who I was and what I did. And that's what really impressed me. It wasn't my background, it was who I was. Huh. Um, you got, you became a leader in the house. You were on, served on e-board. What made you want to do that? I guess it was just seeing the, the guys who had served before and I guess I wanted to emulate them and um, continue a legacy of leadership that they had uh, perpetuated. I don't know, I don't recall actually um, actively running for office, mm -hmm. but when the call came I guess I said yes I would be willing to serve. Mm -hmm. I only served as pylorty so it was no, no big deal. Okay, sorry about that. That's right. Um, we're talking about uh, why you joined the house. Um, well rounded. It's being well rounded. Why you uh, why you became a leader? Was it difficult being uh, pylorides? Uh, some of the pictures I looked at from the seventies uh, made it look like kind of a wild time, just generally uh, in the row. No, pylorides. When I was here, and I presume still the same, Pylorides' main job is during chapter meetings. And no matter what was going on in the house at any one time, chapter meetings were very... Everyone came into chapter meetings with a, a goal of accomplishing house business. In fact, one of the things that I remember most, and I, if you don't do it, I hope the actors will currently will think about it, 
is we our chapter meetings never started until about 10 o'clock on Monday night when most of the houses had chapter meetings immediately following dinner. Our house chose to wait until much later on Monday night so that anyone who had a Monday night class had an opportunity to get back and go to the chapter meeting. We all felt that it automatically excluded anyone who, for whatever reason, had a Monday night class from attending chapter meetings if we had it right after. So we always had a classes at, or I mean chapter meetings at, but they started at 10 o'clock if I remember, huh. after evening classes so that everyone could attend. And so no matter what was going on in the house, everyone attended chapter meetings and they were all very serious. Hmm. I mean, there was plenty of fun happening, mm -hmm. but everybody realized that a chapter meeting was for house business. So the ritual aspects were respected? Yeah, never compromised. Ritual aspects were, were always respected. Hmm. Um, and the, and the, the tenets of mm -hmm. teakdom. I mean, being a teak was something everyone was very serious about. I don't think anyone ever felt that being a teak was something to be discarded or taken lightly. Uh, we were all, I think, very proud to be teaks. And personalities aside, we were teaks and we were brothers. We were all together. When I talked to Jerry Nagley, uh, he was telling me about the pledge program uh, being actually quite tough, but something that he thought was necessary to, you know, make someone a true brother. Can you uh, tell me your yeah, I mean, that's, I'm glad you brought that up. It's a good question. I've, I've given a lot of thought to being a pledge and the pledge process over the past 20 some years since I've been mm -hmm. out, and considerable thought. And in that hindsight, I found that there was never any activity that we were asked to do that didn't create a team, that there was nothing that was conceived that didn't cause us to work together. Even with the sacrifice against the actives. The pledges worked together as a team. And I think that helped bond us such that when once we became actives, we felt that same teamwork progress into being an active. We were brothers. And I, I really feel that there was, there was never anything that we were asked to do that didn't cause us to work together. And it was instilled. It was, whether it was tying our sh all of our shoelaces together, we had uh, 15, uh, 20 pledges. And even if all of our shoelaces were tied together, the point was, when you move, you move together. Even at, it, despite the actives, you, you work together. Uh, if the task was to run across campus to polish the crest or run exposition, we all ran together. And if one of us fell behind, we were all criticized because we didn't fall behind allow that one to catch up. We were all pledges together. And I think it carried on into uh, active life. We were all fraternity brothers. Brothers. So even with the, with the size of the house, brotherhood was really close. Absolutely. Huh. Absolutely. And even in those, you know, there's a lot of rumors that have gone on about the mid and late 70s. Uh, I can't speak about the late 70s. I graduated in 77. But the mid 70s when I was in, uh, we were brothers. And we've all gone our own ways. We all had plenty of differences. We didn't all agree. But we were we all felt as though we were common there was a common bond. Mm -hmm. uh, yours in the bond is the way I sign all my letters to this day to any fraternity brothers, YITB. Mm -hmm. And I presume and I receive letters from fraternity brothers and they all sign YITB. So after twenty five years of being out of the house, it's just natural. Beta Sigma six forty three, YITB. Hmm. Um, how would you describe sorry, do you, oh. this is a lot the side you can edit this out. Do you all do that still? Oh yeah. YITB. Oh yeah. Does that mean anything to mm -hmm. you? Oh yeah. All right. In fact, uh, we uh, anytime any even notes that are posted are always, are, are always YITB, and you have yeah. to add the number. Good. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, Sorry. how how would you describe Teak in relation to the rest of the row when you were in the house? Uh, independent, mm -hmm. not really caring what else goes on in the row. We're at the beginning of the row. Uh, some would consider us, some other houses would consider us at the end of the row, but we always knew that this was the, this was the start of the row, and it really didn't matter. I mean, there was some, certainly competition for Ironman and, and other sports activities and, and Songfest with everybody else. We didn't really care what everybody else did. We tried to take There was always a, tr a significant sense of pride that we had two houses, despite what it looks like. <laughs> we had two houses, and nobody else did. <laughs> um, 
Songfest, was that a, a big deal for you guys? Songfest, certainly for me, and I think for most all the guys who participated, we had, I'd say, at least half of the house participate in Songfest. In fact, in this room, I remember uh, most of the, the general singing practices, rehearsals, were in this room. You, you call it the library, mm -hmm. we thought it was the living room. And the same, I think it's the same piano is, was played at the time. And I learned uh, a lot of lessons. One was, one of the most significant that I still remember and think about today is uh, I took piano lessons years ago when I was a kid and never really saw any value in taking piano lessons. But once I got into Songfest, I realized that once rehearsal was over and everyone was allowed to leave, should they wish to, Kent McGonagall, no names, I guess. One, oh, it's okay, no, okay. names are great. Kent McGonagall, who was our pianist, and just play random musical playing on the piano and attract girls from the sorority we did Songfest with, they would just hover around the piano. And I always thought, you know, if I had learned how to play piano, I could be the guy who was doing that. So I was always envious of Kent. Uh, but I remember Songfest was a, was a big deal and we all rehearsed very uh, diligently, I think. And I remember that the uh, Auto Club parking lot was all of our uh, choreography. And someone talked the auto club into opening up the parking lot, and we would go out there at you know, 9 o'clock at night or so and do our dancing and our choreography. And it was one of the most fond memories being able to close dance with sorority girls that uh, I recall. And of course, performing on the stage of the Greek theater, which was where we performed back then, and, and being down in the bowels of the Greek theater, waiting and waiting and waiting and getting ready for the performance, and then actually standing up there and watching the, having the entire university watching you on the Greek theater uh, was a momentous occasion. It was very powerful for me. I loved it. Huh. Uh, was Iron Man a big deal for you guys? Did you guys compete at, uh, Yeah, athletically? we competed, and we won, um, I don't know, first or second place in ping pong. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave Ferris, I think, had, did very well in ping pong. Greg Kaufman was first place of one year or two. Uh, one of the, the big sports. But it, maybe not one of the big sports, but it carried a lot of points. Mm -hmm. uh, we never really did particularly well in football or basketball, but we always competed, and in track and field, all the sports. We had a good time. We didn't do significantly mm -hmm. well, but we had a good time. Huh. Socially, how were you guys, would you, would you say? Songfest gave us extra points socially. Mm -hmm. um, your average run-of-the-mill exchange wasn't particularly successful. We had girls come. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember the exact houses, but we had the exchanges. And they were fairly, you know, girls came and we danced and everybody had a good time. But I think we were known for our Songfest parties. Uh, we did Songfest one year that I was involved with 80 Pi, and the other year with um, uh, Thetas, Cap Alpha Theta. Mm -hmm. um, and we had lots of girls who came to the, uh, the after uh, performance party. And I think they had a really good time. I think that was one of the ways that our house distinguished itself, is at, the, at a superficial glance, teaks weren't all you know, that much uh, at a superficial glance, teaks weren't all that great. But once the girls got to know the guys, they knew that the guys had a lot of quality. And so, and that's what Songfest did, is it allowed the girls to, to meet us, to learn about us, and to get to know us. And once they did, they came, we had tremendous Songfest. I think the best Songfest parties, uh, post-performance parties, of any house in the row. Huh. Um, I'm trying to think. Have you become involved with the house after? Like after you were there, were you involved that much in the house? Uh, I lived here for about a semester mm -hmm. up in uh, the third floor of Teak East while I was trying to get a job and get established. And I lived up in the, uh, the very top floor of Teak East for my last year and then the next six months or so after I graduated. Mm -hmm. But I haven't been involved in the Board of Control or anything. Okay. But I come back for all the games. Mm -hmm. how, how would you describe the alumni uh, involvement in, in the 70s, in the mid-70s? Um, we always beat them in alumni football, if I remember, but I don't remember them being particularly involved. Uh, I remember seeing guys around once in a while, mm -hmm. and we had um, one or two alumni dinners every year, and we'd have some alumni come back and visit us uh, for those, usually George Woolery mm -hmm. and Connie Solom, and some other alumni who were very dedicated and came and visited, but it, it wasn't particularly significant. Mm. Um, if you could 
describe the chapter in three words when you were in it. What three words would you think you'd use? Three consecutive words or three adjectives? Just any, any three words, really. Concentrating on brotherhood. I'd say that the Teaks who were here when I was were concentrated on brotherhood. Uh, concentrated on working together. It's four words. Hmm. Why would you say that? Just Because of the interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, chapter meetings, there was plenty uh, of difference of opinion. But when we walked out of here after a chapter meeting, everyone was friends again. Everyone worked toward the same goal, and that was to, uh, to foster the Teak fraternity experience. And, uh, you know, there's the, there are certainly exceptions. But I'd say by and large, everyone was interested in working together. Everyone knew that we had to live together here. Mm -hmm. So I think they were con uh, concentrated on overcoming whatever differences there were. And working together. When I when I spoke with Jerry Nagley, uh, he had mentioned something about the house being very diverse. Yeah. Uh, in the seventies. Yeah. And, you... and that's that's what I say when I when I pledged. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons I pledged is we had uh, Phi Beta Kappa guys, we had Rotsies, we had uh, athletes, we had you know people from guys from not only every demographic group economically. I mean their daddies did very different things, had very different success rates, mm -hmm. but that wasn't what brought us together. What brought us together was the chemistry of, do I like you, do we like you, and would you fit in with us? Mm -hmm. And that's one. Re that's the big reason why I pledged. Hmm. Uh, okay, one last question, and then I'll, I'll give you kind of free reign to, to say whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, if you could take one thing that you got from being a teak that you cherish the most, what would that be? Uh, if I could take one thing away from my fraternity experience, I think it would be the appreciation of compromise. It would be the learning that I gained from having to compromise with 70 fraternity brothers with whom you live every day, year in, day in, day out, year in, year out for several years. Um, no one wins necessarily, but you learn to adapt, to adjust, to work with others' opinions. I'd say compromise would be the one thing that I took away from here, most important. Uh, any old war stories? Um, any memories that kind of stick out? Uh, we're, if the mic doesn't pick it up, the sorority girls are practicing for their rush week. That was always a very popular time of year. Mm -hmm. uh, sitting up on the roof of Teak East and watching the parade of sorority girls up and down, that was always a big deal. Uh, we had an alumni from, I think, Illinois, somewhere in Illinois, uh, Nick Maloof, who was trying to make it big in Hollywood. He was a singer, and he was trying to make it big in Los Angeles as a singer, and came out here, and he lived in the floor of Teak East. And he was a very popular member here, and I don't know that anybody has seen him since we all graduated, but Nico the Tico is a, was a, a big popular f uh, person. Uh, song fest you hit, initiation, mm -hmm. I hit chapter meetings, the street parties, I assume are still always lots of fun. Oh really, it's like just open parties? or? Yeah, open parties mm -hmm. with uh, uh, speakers, everybody would, all along the row, would blast their seven foot speakers out onto the street. And uh, as you would move down the row, you'd have different music playing with each different house and almost open uh, refreshments. Uh, and the whole street w wouldn't be blocked off, literally, but for all practical purposes, it'd be blocked off for cars, but they're, they're just walking around, especially after football games. So street parties were always a big, were very popular. And now that Disneyland has gone to a one, one price for all the rides, uh, the young people don't recognize the uh, truth to the old saying that the row is still an e-ticket ride. But that's for the old guys to appreciate. <laughs>